Well, now what? So it's summer now, and I want to make a thing. Not just anything, but a thing that does something. A thing that works. Maybe like a plane or a rocket or something. I don't know. We'll see. Well, making the thing isn't going too well. I am limited by my materials. I have FDM 3D print and resin. One of them is super brittle, one of them's inaccurate, and both of them burn. So if I wanted to make a rocket, I couldn't. I only have 10 weeks of summer until I go off to college and none of this matters, so whatever I do has to be cheap. Now I don't know if you guys know this, but I used to melt metal on YouTube. So while metal tools are super expensive, I already have 90% of the tools I need to make these projects. Now, sadly, most of those tools were made by me. So all I really have to do is fix this kiln that I made two and a half years ago. The thing about this kiln is that it's actually just a piece of crap. You have these two sets of coils and you can only run one on the power output from the house. On top of that, you only have one layer of fire brick. So all of the heat escapes through these walls. The lid's pretty bad too. All we're doing right now is increasing the insulation by one brick on each side and redoing the coils so it actually matches the power output of the house. The coils look much, much better. We're at 152 without the lid on. I'm still concerned though that it's not going to get anywhere near. I'm gonna leave this on for about two hours. All right, we are day two of kiln making and today we're gonna make a bunch of changes. It got up to 840 degrees Fahrenheit. That's likely because the coils were at the top. There's not enough insulation in the lid and the resistance of the coils is just a little too high. We're gonna move this coil down to the bottom, cut a little bit off of it, and also add some insulation to the top. I got good news and I got bad news. Good news is we broke the record. We got to 1,133 degrees, but when I came out here at the two hour 33 mark, it was at 700 degrees, which means it turned off somehow. And now for the bad news. I don't know what the hell happened. I don't know why it turned off. That doesn't make sense. I'm not seeing any open circuits. However, I will check the resistance after it's cooled down. I'm going to check the fuse next, and if not that, maybe one of these wires. Fuse is fine, I might replace it anyway. I'm guessing there's about a four hour wait for this thing to cool down, so. In the meantime, we're going to get on with making this vacuum chamber. Now that everything's working properly, except for the vacuum chamber because it's screwy and nobody likes it, we're going to test everything by casting a play button because, well, thank you for 1k. And I feel bad for not teaching you anything, so instead of playing that last montage, I'll teach you about how I fixed the kiln and what I did wrong the first time. The kiln converts electricity to heat by using resistance coils. Resistance is the measurement of how easy it is for electrons to pass through a wire. So in essence, more resistance equals more heat. A material like copper has low resistance, so they use it in applications everywhere because it's efficient with energy. A material like nichrome, an alloy, has very high resistance, so it's good for heating things up. And the more wire you have, the more resistance there is through the circuit. And that's why you coil up the wire. It allows for more wire to be there, and therefore more heat is exerted in the area. While more resistance means more heat, I have limits. I'm running it off house power, which means maximum of 15 amps at 120 volts. Using Ohm's law, we can figure out exactly how far I can stretch my coil before I pop a circuit breaker. Two and a half years ago, I didn't exactly, you know, do that math. However, this time around, I actually did the math with a factor of safety, making it so that I only draw nine amps. That failed, so I upped it to 12. In this case, resistance and heat are not directly proportional because voltage is constant. So with more resistance comes less current and with less current means less power. That felt like a lot to cover, but we're done and the cast failed because I didn't pour in enough plaster. Everything fell through and there were a couple steam explosions. Well, that was sad, but thankfully, since it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. That's just how not mattering works typically. 
At the end of the day, I want to call this a great success because the kiln actually got up to temperature. This means that in the next video, we should actually be able to cast things correctly instead of going and trying to machine them. The only problem that we'll have for the next video is getting a proper vacuum caster to work. When you're working with those tiny parts, you need it to pull into the tiny crevices. And right now we just don't have that capability. So making things like fan blades won't be possible until we have that done. But making things like rocket nozzles, that might be possible. Be on the lookout for either one of those videos and I'll see you then.